Now we're going to find the p-value uh, so we can determine our, uh, the results of our hypothesis test. So what we need to do is look for uh, those cases or those trials uh, that are similar to our data. So remember our data were 23, uh, so down here um, the uh, African-American black doctors reported about 23, well not about, 23 out of 33 uh, respondents reported some sort of bias. And so we get our p-value from our data here at 23 and anything more. And so what we want to do is just find out now how likely it was um, again given our assumption. So our null hypothesis assumption is that the proportion of doctors, of African American and black doctors who report, not who report, who suffer bias. Let me try to get this right. So we are assuming in our null hypothesis here that the proportion of the this group of doctors, the African American black, uh, who suffer bias is 0.59, okay, some sort of bias. So that's the population we're assuming. And then we took these random samples. We had 33 doctors, um, can't quite see the full 33 here. Uh, if I make this just a little bit smaller, there I can see all 33. So we had 33 samples, uh, um, where uh, observations where we had, you know, these 33 doctors um, report randomly from this population. And in this first trial, 20 of them reported bias then 14, then 17, then 16, and so forth. Well, how many reported, uh, uh, how many of the trials had 23 or more report? Well, these trials right here, and so what we need to do is add those up and divide by a thousand to get the proportion, okay? Because I know there are a thousand cases in here, and if I didn't know how many cases, I'd have to add up the whole thing to find out how many cases or trials, uh, but I know that we did a thousand trials, so um, what I want to do is label it. So I'm going to say, okay, this is my p-value, um, but now I'm going to actually tell you what that means. So there's my p-value, and uh, this is the probability, so I'll write a pr for probability that uh, probability that a random variable, which is our sample means in this case, now usually we just call that some x, is greater than or equal to our 23. That's what we want, and so we need to find that. And uh, okay, I'm going to widen that so that fits. Okay, and all we have to do then to get that um, probability or that p-value is um, I need to add up the numbers in this column but from the 23 down. And so I'm going to say equals sum and go down here and highlight from that number 76 down to that last zero and close that parenthesis and hit enter. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, what do I want? I want right justification on that, so that goes right up to the 140 and left justi justification there. Uh, now, there was my sum. I didn't get my uh, divided by a thousand in there. I got a little trigger happy on the enter. So, divided by 1000. Uh, again, that gives me that proper proportion or probability. And so my p-value is 0.14. And 
so that's pretty big. Uh, you know, it's much bigger than the 0.05 that we need to um, discard this null hypothesis. So we're stuck with this null hypothesis at this point. So, um, you know, there we've we've performed the hypothesis test. We've gotten our p-value, and it is 0.14, which says uh, we fail to reject that hypothesis right there. These this H0P equals 0 0.59. It's too big. Okay, I want. I need a little number here. It was big. Now again, by little, eh, we're saying less than 0.05 or, or 5 out of 100 or 5 percent or 1 in 20, uh, but it's too big. So um, we get the 0.14. Fine. Now, what I, I'd like you to do, uh, just to help cement what all this means is I'd also like you to produce it visually over here and and so what we need to do uh, I've played with this a little bit uh, what we need to do is um, actually get rid of the bars from 23 on up uh, from this group not use them but then add another data series um, like this that has just those from uh, 23 on up. And notice every time I do this it changes. Uh, that used to be a 76 I think, now it's a 66. Uh, but we'll, So we'll see this 0.14 change a little bit, um, but uh, you know, it won't change a lot. Now so to do what we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and enter, uh, insert a column to the left here, and I'm going to rename things. So instead of frequency, I, I'm going to call this um, uh, either data or trials or random trials, something like that. I, I think I'll go with random trials. Okay, that's where that came from. I need to widen that out a little bit. And um, this is our, our rant. Oh, wait. well, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to say rant. I'm being silly. I was thinking ahead to uh, a new part of the project. But um, so, uh, yeah, I don't. Um, what I want to do is, is say, uh, point out that this is. Uh, smaller than our data or less extreme than data than um, than our data less extreme than data So it's making that very wide, but that's okay. I've done all this stuff, so I don't really need to see that. I'm going to grab this plot and move it over. And now, then, this column is going to be um, as or more extreme uh, than data. Okay, and again, our, our data were uh, 23 out of, whew, that's pretty, pretty wide there. Okay, there we go. And now I can still see my plot and so forth. So what we need to do is uh, make these in here all zeros. And now if I bring this down, notice it's going up to one, so I need to let it know what my pattern is, and I could just use copy and paste or something like that, but uh, I'll just uh, highlight both zeros, uh, bring it down here to the 22, and those are all zeros. Then here, um, I just want whatever's over there. Okay, because I, I just want the rest of this data, and I'll pull that down. And so you see it keeps changing now. This one's 68, you know, it's been 60, it's been 66, it's been 76. But notice up here, 
um, you know, it's at 15%. You know, you, you should be getting something usually, you know, 13 to 15% uh, up here, 0 0.15, 0 0.13. You might even get something as low as 12%, uh, possibly as high as 16%. Um, but there I've got this set up. Now, um, what we can do to, to make this look kind of cool, so, um, and yes, I think it's cool. You know, I, if I can get across something with a visual display, I think that's really great. Okay, so I am going to go here to data ranges, and you can go, you know, if you right click on yours, or if you look up here in the top ribbon stuff, uh, when you're editing a plot, uh, you should find something like data ranges, data series. So, you know, usually mine would come up on data ranges, but I've been messing with it, so it came up on data series, which is what I want. That's where I can add and remove um, more columns of data. Um, you might find something that says select data. Uh, it can vary. So, here, um, what I want to do first is change my Y values. Right now, the Y values go all the way down here. Uh, well, I'll have to go out here to, to see, but they go all the way to the bottom of the column. I only want them to go down those first 22, um, or actually 23, because we start at zero. Uh, but I just want to go from here down to here at that 22 okay and then now if you can see over here um, this plot you know it all of a sudden stopped at 22 even though these numbers go to 37 uh, and that's kind of what I found was you know why we have to do it this particular way um, we need to keep those categories uh, as they were with the original plot and now I'm going to add a new series and for the name um, you may or may not have to to put these things in um, but for the name I'm just going to go here so there's the name and uh, then the Y values for this one I do all these down here so I didn't really even have to put those zeros in um, or wait, yeah, I think I do have to put those zeros in. Yeah, let's just see see what happens. Yeah, um, so let me say, uh, well, can I move this out? No, I can't move it out of the way. Uh, let me go, okay, and open that back up. So when I move that, it did some funky stuff. So see, yeah, that's right. Um, notice it put them down here at zero so I don't want that so I need to uh, start at the top with mine and again yours may behave slightly differently that's okay so I want that data set my Y values I don't want them to start at near the bottom I want to do the whole thing in this case yeah because it shows it left and again I, I don't know you know if every spreadsheet will do this but um, uh, by doing this there we go and I say okay and there that's nice so see I made it two different colors but now I need a legend and I had taken the legend out so um, uh, insert legend uh, I don't know, did it insert it? Hmm. I'm not sure I see it anywhere. Let's see what happens if I do this. Hmm. Well, oh, there's the legend, I guess. Uh, format legend. Uh, font color well, it should be automatic let's just make sure here I'm going to go with black and say ok uh, let's 
See, I run into problems too. Let me go back to my data ranges. Um, look at name. Well, it's got a name there. And it's got a name there. Okay. Um, huh. Okay, so yeah, it's saying the I have the legend there. It's kind of weird. Ah, I just had to make it bigger. Okay, so you see, I can be just as confused as anybody else. Um, oops. Okay, I'm gonna move that legend over here a little bit and go like that. Yeah. and move it down just a little bit so I can read it better that looks pretty good so less extreme than data as or more extreme than data so here I can actually see in my bar chart of my um, sampling distribution here I can see exactly uh, what is what so these were all less than 23 down here to the left and these are all uh, greater than or equal to 23 uh, over here to the right and uh, I'm gonna have you do this in the project uh, because I think sort of forcing you to look at that visual as well as uh, create the uh, tabular stuff up here uh, with the calculations I think that's important because uh, what I find semester after semester is that um, students seem to uh, kind of fail to see what is um, going on with these data here. Okay, they they just um, seem to miss the boat as to. Um, what a hypothesis test really really is and it is simply looking at my uh, sampling distribution that I came up with now we'll, in the same project we're going to find a much easier way to come up with that sampling distribution than what we did with all these um, uh, random trials here but uh, we just take our sampling distribution and we uh, are looking to see where our data would fall and more extreme than our data by more extreme farther outside than our data and that's what we're doing every single time so we'll call that good for this video